What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. Yes, I've got the spaghetti strings out, very rare. However, that's because I was just editing yesterday's video. I recorded the intro last night already and just look at my hair. It looks like somebody shoved my head in a toilet. Anyhow, can't have that. So today I'm gonna show you exactly how to create these sort of colored slash Aurora slash texturized backgrounds for your website interfaces. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So right here, you can see sort of like this I, uh, you know, s multiple hues, like this blur fade, like in the background. And uh, if, if we really get up close, you can see it's also texturized. So this isn't something that you can create solely inside of Figma. I'm gonna use Photoshop and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Additionally, I'll also show you how to create a dark mode using pretty much the same image um, and using different uh, filters and the image or photo editing abilities within Figma itself. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022 and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so right here I kind of have a starter template and I'm going to make this available uh, in the YouTube description. So you can download that, drag it to a folder or on your desktop and then literally drag that file, that fig file on top of the Figma interface um, where it shows all your recent projects and then it'll import it automatically and then you can click open. Um, and so yeah, worth following along just to get the muscle memory if you've never done something like this before. So here I have just like a basic, um, this is actually a part of this design is from my previous tutorial um, a few days ago, but I, I did just add this, you know, just kind of like a basic simple section and we have a boring 100% plain white background. What if we wanted to add some color? So this is one of the many ways that we can do that. Um, so what we'll do in order to do that, and you might be thinking to yourself, we could do this by maybe um, taking the background here and adding um, a, like a gradient or something like that. Um, so. We could do that, but you're not gonna have that grainy texture that you're kind of looking for. Um, and also, it's kind of harder, to, it's harder to control um, the actual aesthetic um, compared to using something like Photoshop. So that's what we're gonna use. We are going to use Photoshop for this. So I'm gonna create a new document. And right here, width and height, we're gonna set that to 1800 to 1200 something around there it, it you know there's no rule it says it has to be that but something right around there i think would work well for this sort of thing it's large enough but it's not like massive um and it should work pretty well so we have a white background that's the background that we're going to be using for the website um and what we're going to do is create a new layer Control shift n is a shortcut for creating a new layer and that shows up right down there and we are going to take our brush tool right here all right, and up here, we're gonna make this pretty large. It's gonna be a thousand uh, for a thousand pixels for the size, and then for the hardness, zero percent. That means it's gonna be very soft. All right, so now we're gonna add color. Not that though, that looks ugly. Also, flow has uh, that was at fifty percent. Make sure that's at a hundred. All right, so now if we do that, that looks bad. Don't ever do something like <laughs> like that for a website background. Anyhow, what we wanna do is add color, all right? So I'm gonna come right around here, kind of like in this uh, orange area, and we're gonna come probably somewhere, now I may have to adjust this a few times, but I'm thinking somewhere right around here, kind of at the top and in the middle. Uh, I'm gonna hit okay, and I'm gonna left click, and eh, maybe right around here. I actually like that. Um, it's, it's not something that could contrast way too much. It's not something that has too much, um, uh, color saturation in it. For instance, you know, you probably wouldn't want to do something like this. Instead, that would be too jarring. So something right around here for the first color would work just fine. Um, and then we can create a new layer. And we want to put these on different layers just so we can control them after the fact. Um, otherwise, if you put on the same layer, it's going to affect everything. Um, so now 
We're gonna come back right here, like to the middle, like around where that was, and then we're just gonna adjust the hue um, to look a, a bit different, uh, just like a, a different color of sorts. Um, I think for me, maybe we'll go a little bit more on the red side. I'm not sure though if I like that, but we'll we'll check it out. All right, that's fine. I actually kind of like that. Let's do one more, and we'll go like right around here. And this time, we're gonna choose something like, yeah, right around there, like a pinkish. Ooh, that stands out a little bit too much in my opinion, so we're gonna come back over here. We could also adjust the opacity of the layer, not like a huge deal. Now, one thing that we can also do to influence how this looks is we could change right down here the different blend modes. So if we choose like darken, I kind of like that. So normal is like this where it's just overlaid on top because it's at the top of the layer stack. But if we choose darken, it really just creates, uh, it allows the other colors to come through. Multiply. I'll be honest here, I, I really like darken. And then we could also experiment with applying darken uh, to the other one as well. All right, there we go. Very simple. I sort of like it. Um, just a quick, you know, a, a demo of what this looks like. Okay, so now I we're not done yet. Let's go ahead and take all three of these. So you hold Shift, select all three of those, starting at the top and then bottom. So it looks like this, and then we hit Control G to group them up. All right, and then we come over here to filter, convert for smart filters, all right? So why isn't that working? Yeah, well hit okay after you select that. I was trying to zoom up to show you. Um, and then we can go to filter and then we can go to, uh, let's see, uh, noise, right there. We wanna click add noise. Now I've already had this set up to what I think is pretty ideal. All right, now because of the video compression here on YouTube, you may not be able to see it, but there's a very slight grain slash noise effect on this. Uh, and I think 3.4% is, is right around the sweet spot. If you add too much, it's gonna look ridiculous. If you don't add enough, it really doesn't add anything to the effect. So let's just hit okay with that. And now that's been applied. Now what we can do is just save this. Save this as a JPEG. So if I hit Control, Shift, Alt, and S, that's save for web. So now we can come back, make sure it says JPG over here and quality is around 33. That way your file size, uh, which is shown right here, is low. Uh, that's what you want because we're dealing with the web. People have, you know, sometimes around phones and it loads slow and all that stuff. So 36 KB for a large image like this is just fine. And of course right here, it gives you a preview of the quality when you do that and it still looks solid in my opinion. So we're gonna hit save. And I'm just gonna save this as, I, um, let's see, my blur. All right, now we're gonna go back. We're gonna select the background. Now the background, I wanna make a duplicate of. So just Control D to duplicate that. And then we're gonna get rid of any shadows that were on there. And then we're gonna take our fill over here, change this to image, and then choose image, and then choose my blur. Look at that. It's already like situated in a pretty good area. Now if you find that you wanna move it, all you have to do is come over here, change this to crop, and then just move this off to the side. Maybe a little bit over there, and there you go. Awesome, awesome stuff. Um, so now you can take in, um, let's see, I did have like a little graphic down here. Put something there, and then you know, you give it kind of some context. Now you might be wondering, how exactly can we make this work with maybe like a dark mode version of this? I'm gonna show you that as well. All right, so let's come back over here. I kinda of wanna just, let's get rid of that. It's annoying me, get off of there, there we go. And what we'll do is, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna choose absolute black. I'm going to, well first before we get to that point, let us go to, uh, back to Photoshop. So let's load that up. And I'm gonna take this right here, this group, and we are going to duplicate that. Actually, no. We're gonna take this background layer, all right? We're gonna right click on it and choose, um, let's see, layer from background. There we go. That way we can include this in an all new group. So Control G, we'll call this light. Oh, my caps lock is on. I have a SpongeBob caps going right now. So duplicate that group. This one will be dark. 
We'll hide the light version, so now it looks like that. So now we'll extend this, and we're gonna change our background here to, let's go to the like a blue hue over here, and something right around here. So it's very dark and it's desaturated, but not quite. All right, so now we're just going to fill that in. Now this looks terrible, right? It's just way too much uh, crap and garbage is occurring. So how would we fix that? All right, so we can go ahead and take this group. We can fix it here, but you can also make your adjustments in Figma. And I think we're gonna try that route first and just to see how it works. So we'll take this, we're gonna say this as my, my dark blur. All right, and then we're going to take the image and replace it with my dark blur. All right, and we are also going to take this bottom rectangle and we're gonna get the same exact color if we can. There we, wait, yeah. that's not perfectly the same. What I'll do instead is just go back here and just change this to fill. All right. Additionally, I'm gonna go ahead and take the background of the actual frame and choose something like that, but just kind of make it lighter. Let's also take all of our type and stuff like that. I'm selecting all of it real quick. And under stroke, make that white. And then I make this white. And there we go. All right, so this looks terrible clearly looks terrible. Um, if we hide this, the background, all right, we see the background is not white, it's actually how we want it. Now, what we can do to fix this up is we can adjust the exposure. Now, if you go away like that, that's gonna wash it out. We can also adjust the contrast. We can adjust saturation. Now, temperature, I think, starts to look really cool. Look at that, so now I'm adjusting the tint. You can see all the settings right here. Now this will kind of uh, bring out a little bit of lightness here for highlights if, when you push that up. Now of course if you go too high, you see the grain a little bit too much. So we can bring that down just a tad. Shadows. This actually sort of gets rid of some of the grain And finally, you might not want to make it stick out quite that much, although it really just depends on what you know what you're kind of looking for. We can also take the background and probably uh, adjust this. So does it affect anything? No, it doesn't. Um, let's see here. We could take the uh, pass through, push it down. So there's a million different ways that you can make adjustments, oops, yeah, yeah, adjustments to this. We have this ugly uh, drop shadow here, let's get rid of that, there we go. And then we could probably take this. There we go. And look at that. So essentially the same colors, except we changed the background here, and now we've created a really cool uh, effect um, for the background just to give it texture of some sort. Now, I've talked many times in this channel about texture. There's a lot of different ways to add texture to just an empty area that is just completely, you know, a solid flat color like white or dark black or, or black or whatever. Um, and this is just one of the ways. Other ways, of course, include adding an illustration, adding a watermark, uh, adding a photograph based watermark, etc., etc. And this is just another way that you can do that. All right. Now we can actually probably move this back up here and that'll look pretty decent. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to check out designcourse.com to learn UI, UX interactively and also add mentorship to get my feedback directly. And also, of course, here on YouTube, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, like, and all that good stuff. All right, goodbye.